Hi, I'm Jody Vance, and this is Bar Smart. What is Bar Smart, you ask? Well, it's an attitude, a new style of service, and if it's done right, it's a license to print money. How do I know? Well, I've spent a ton of money and time being entertained by the man who pioneered this program. Of course, I'm speaking of Scott Young. I remember the first time I saw Scott wow the crowd at the Roxy. As a matter of fact, I think I was one of that crowd, and I knew right then and there that I'd be back. Scott and his instructors travel internationally, speaking at trade shows, putting on seminars, and judging worldwide competitions. Since 1994, Scott has taken the business of great service to a new level, and the fun has only just begun. You may know him as the creator of Extreme Bartending, the video training series that shows you exactly how to put this winning formula to work for you and your staff. But Bar Smart has always been about much more than just flipping bottles. It's about taking care of the customer, having them come back soon, stay longer, and walk away talking about what a great experience they had. Now, if you ask Scott what his company is all about, he'll tell you it's about spreading ideas, getting people thinking about how they can do their job better. The Flair Bartenders Association gave Scott an award for having the most impact internationally as a trainer. Now, I can go on and on about this young man, but I'd rather let you watch this video and decide for yourself. All I know is in the last 10 years, I've watched as his bar had a lineup while other wells in the club stand empty. Proof's in the pouring, and this is Scott Young. Hi, I'm Scott Young. What you're about to see is a little bit different than any other training video you may have seen. I don't know if you've ever seen a seminar or been to a presentation, but I've often found that the instructors are very knowledgeable on the subject, but they stand up and they talk to you or at you for an hour. Maybe they read out of a book and never bother to ask you what you think. Well, I never liked that, and we don't do it that way. We want this to be intimate and interactive. There are very few right or wrong, black or white things in this industry, and we'll discuss them. But for the most part, they're shades of gray. Now, this is a big world out there. This service industry is everywhere, and I can't just tell you what's going to work in your area, but we can give you some new ideas and hopefully get you thinking about what will. Whether you're watching this video alone or with a group, it's not really designed to be watched in one sitting. It's not a movie. So stop it once in a while. Rewind it. Make sure you catch all the ideas. Our goal is to stimulate thoughts and discussions, agreements and disagreements, creativity and solutions, ideas. That's what we're all about. You've picked a great industry to be involved in. We want to excite you about it. There's all sorts of opportunities out there for the right kind of person. The kind of person who's going to care enough about what they do to think about how to do it better and then actually go out and do something about it. Hey everybody, thanks for coming. Okay, today we're going to be talking about responsible service of alcohol. You know, drinking and driving, we all know what it is. Um, do we have any obligations, legal, moral? You know, all sorts of things about this. So, um, first question, do we have a responsibility to take care of the people that we're serving? Absolutely, yeah. Totally. You know, first of all, let's get this straight. This is not legal, legal advice, nor is it intended to be so, right? This is going all over the world, and everybody has different laws accepted. A couple main points I want to make is that this is a serious problem in a lot of countries. You know, people are dying. People are getting injured. Right? And a lot of it has to do with our industry. All right, so I want to bring up some ideas and maybe some things will sink in. Um, I want to read you a couple of quotes. Some have to do with, with Canada, but it really applies across North America, and, and I'm sure uh, it's, not a, uh, it's not a strange thing you know, for the rest of the world. Um, in the last decade, more than 2 million Canadians were injured in traffic accidents. So there's a lot of stuff going on out there on the road. 40 to 50% of all the drivers that were killed on Canadian roads were impaired at the time of the accident. Think about it for that for a second. 50% of people who, who were killed, they were impaired. That scares me. Right? Half of all alcohol-related accidents occur between 11 p.m. and 3 a.m. Last call. Right? And in North America, it is estimated that on a, any Friday night, Friday or Saturday night, it's estimated that one in 10 drivers uh, has been drinking and uh, 1 in 10 has been, actually let me just read this again. In North America, it's estimated that 1 in 5 drivers has been drinking and 1 in 10 is legally impaired on any Friday or Saturday night. So start counting the next time you drive home, how many people are, are over the legal limit. Well, that's a very scary thought. Uh, my main point is, or my question is, do we have something to do with that? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely we do, right? Now, we are making money off of people drinking. 
What happens when people drink? What happens to their decision process? A little blurry. Gets a little blurry. <laughs> right? They're not making good decisions. They're not thinking quite as clearly. Right? Well, we know this. This is a fact. Right? So we have to take this in consideration. You know, we're serving them alcohol. They're getting in this state. We know they're, they're going to potentially put themselves in harm's way. Well, you know, I think that we have certainly a moral obligation to take care of them because we're making money off of them. Right? What about a legal obligation? A lot of countries are holding you personally responsible now. It's no longer an industry where you can say, well, hey, I just work here. <coughs> right? Sure, the bar can be held responsible, and that's been there for a long time, you know, which is bad enough. But you personally, you personally, the bartender, can be held responsible. Right? What does that mean? Well, that means that if you get sued right, and, and you lose, it means you could be writing a check. A lot of people don't really understand that. You know, this is coming. This is going across the world, right? and it's a dangerous thing. Now, some countries are better than others, and that's, that's really good. Awareness is really helping. And that's kind of what this video is all about. Number one, I think it's important for a leader to stand up and say, hey, I think this is important. Hey, drinking and fun, that's great. We want everybody to have a good time, but I want you to make it home safely. You know, I believe in this. Uh, you know, I think we've all probably had some stories. Does anybody know anybody who's had any, any accidents, any... any uh, Please. I was talking to a guy yesterday, they were in Mexico for New Year's, and um, he had been drinking, he was uh, barely, he was under, he wasn't, but he hit two kids on a bicycle at 80 miles, one toast, and he was very fortunate to get out of there for $150,000. Wow. He, he was an American or a Canadian? He was Canadian. Okay, and it went down there. Drank a little bit, wasn't over the limit there. He he was, yeah, I think he was uh, like would blow a yellow or whatever here. Yeah. But um, wow. he, he just he's screwed for life, like mentally now. He's sure. Just, he killed and, a kid. Yeah. yeah. You know that, that's never gonna leave him. He that's was there lucky forever. to get out of jail, let alone. And who wants to be in a Mexican jail? Yeah. I don't know, but I'm mean, Mexico's a great country, it's a great place to surf and, you know, and whatever. But and his friend sitting beside him was really wasted, and really? he was sleeping. He was passed out, and he woke up to a dead kid's face in the window. Wow, you know, but real story, true story. True story. Um, I know a person that uh, was a bartender, and was pardon me, I, a good friend of mine knew this bartender, and uh, it was last call, sort of, you know, no, nope, it's 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 enough time and. Oh, just give me one more, one more for the road. Well, another wor word for that is one more for the ditch. Well, first of all, the person made the decision, no, I don't think I should give you another drink. Well, went back on that decision, gave the person another drink. You know, bar closed, bartender went out, closed up the bar, you know, took half an hour or whatever, drove home. The other person sort of, hey, I've been drinking, I better sober up. So, you know, drove around the corner to a, you know, to a coffee shop, got some coffee to sober up, right? And uh, got on the road at the same time, hit the bartender. Six months in the hospital, this bartender was. And, you know, he knew better, right? He made the decision, no, you have too much to drink. I don't want to serve you. Went back on his own thoughts, right? Bad things can happen. Yeah, but I think, like, I remember when I worked in Calgary and there was uh, Shane, Frankie, and Johnny's. There was a South and North, and I think it was the North one. And this bartender, they'd had a private, like, you know, how the staff stays after. And one of the regulars had stayed, and he had been drinking all night in the bar. Anyway, when he left, it was about, I don't know, 5.30 in the morning. And he crossed the meridian on the road, and he wiped out a whole family. Like, the whole family. And they came back, and they tried to sue the bar, because they said not only had the bartender fed him too much liquor, but the bar had been after hours used as a place. And, I mean, this guy, like, how do you live your life knowing, you know, like, he lived. Yeah. He was the only one that lived. And that happens a lot, people. too. Well, yeah. because drunks are relaxed, like, unfortunately, right? But, yeah, I mean, I don't think you ever come back from that. But I watch yeah. people leave, and, I mean, how much does it cost you to put them in a cab? Exactly. Or to call a cab to their house? Or, you exactly. Know, there's there's some someone. things that we can do to increase our odds that they get home safely, right? And that also decreases our liability. Right. Again, we're not going to get into legal advice here, but there's some things that we can do to, you know, to increase our odds of taking care of the people more. Did you have another? Well, I just think in every group of friends, if you see someone stumbling through, like, say, the Roxy, and I mean, of course, it happens in every bar, there's usually one friend in every group of people that's kind of the babysitter sure. on any given night. And if you can find their babysitter, 
you can usually get them home or someone will take the keys away. I mean, you don't always have to do it yourself, yeah. but you can steer them in the right direction. Find the leader of the group. Find the Excellent leader. Excellent idea. Because there's always, a there's always someone that's thinking still. Huge. The main thing is you've got to care enough. You know, and that's what this video is all about, getting you to understand that there's some implications here. You know? So hopefully that will get you to care. First of all, I don't want to kill a kid. I don't want to drive home drunk. I want to do that. I don't want to serve somebody or over-serve somebody and go out and he's going to kill somebody. That would make me feel horrible. Like you know, I don't want that in my life. Right? So I've had some really interesting discussions with people. Uh, a lot of places, it's illegal to take their keys. Right? But you can ask for them, right? but you can't take it. Well, you know, I tell you, if you're a good customer, if I know you're coming in and you're driving, I'm taking your keys. You can call the police on Fire me. Fine. I'm telling you, you're not driving. You know, tomorrow we'll discuss this later. You know, I've had these, and that's, that's the choice that I've made, right? Because I've seen too many bad things happen. And I think it takes a leader to stand up and go, I believe this is important. You know, I care enough about you, you know, to do this. I remember a specific instance uh, many years ago, a guy on a motorcycle, uh, he actually worked with him. You know, great guy, big, very strong, deadly guy. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't, he, I, he gave me his keys and his helmet to hold. And afterwards, I wouldn't give it to him, right? And, you know, he's like super black belt and a whole bunch of things. He just wiped the floor with me, absolutely. I'm like, I'm not giving it to you. You know, I went through all the diplomatic ways and, you know, I just, it's not going to happen. Fine, kill me, go ahead right here. Take your best shot, but do it quickly. <laughs> you know, I was like, because I'm not giving it to you, right? Well, eventually... You know, he came back later on. He didn't, didn't drive and came back. You know, you're the only person that cared. I've been here for years working this place, and, and nobody, you know, cared enough to make an effort. You know, you're a friend. You're a real friend. Well, be that to your customer. You know, take that extra step. Or right? it's going to advertise, too. Like, I know it's in the Roxy. They have that place where you can come and, you know, they take, yeah, they come get your car and drive your car home. Yeah, Huge. Advertise it. You and your car. Home. That's exactly. right. For, and, and then they, and they take MasterCard and Visa, right. which is perfect at the end of the night. Right. But, I mean, give people options. If people have no right. options, they'll drink and drive. It's called a safe ride program. And it, ride. That's right. Yeah, and it's in many different cities, especially around holidays. Very powerful, right? So do you agree with the fact that there's some legal obligations, some legal obligations here? Totally. Again, every country is different. Are there some moral obligations here? Absolutely. I totally believe that. Disagree with me if you like, but that's what I believe. Right? Now, what are some ways that, first of all, we can not get them to over-service to begin with? What are some ways that we can, what are warning signs of intoxication? <coughs> some basic things. Sorry? Slurred speech. Slurred speech. <coughs> I have a corona thing. Exactly. Right? Sure. Dave? Argumentative. Sure. They just want to fight. Yeah. Right? I want to right? Now, you know, keep in mind, <laughs> we'd be doing this for a while, but a lot of people out there are just getting into the industry and they don't really know these things. So let's go over the really basic things, right? Because this is important. People need to know this. Right? They're loud, they're obnoxious occasionally. Fumbling, fumbling with their money. Fumbling. Yeah, Dale, fumbling with their money. They're not really sure. Here, here's my wallet. Take Dexterity. It. Like, yeah. Coordination. Knocking yeah. over yeah. drinks, picking up drinks. Knocking over drinks, exactly. Sleeping yeah. on the bar. Sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> Sleeping on the bar is always a, always a good indication. Throw a puking on a, hey, pukey. <laughs> Oh, it's going to cost me 20 bucks to pay my port to clean that up. Yeah. <laughs> I, much better now. I can drink again. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> right? yeah, my, my favorite one is we people. Have, I don't have oh, a yeah. glass with a straw, but my favorite one is the people that are doing this. Mm -hmm. Trying to find the straw. <laughs> 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 we get a close up on that? <laughs> Back to the adult um, film. Right, those are, those are some really great points. What are some other things you look for? Slide a shower. Sure. Yes. You know, what about cigarettes? Did we go to light the wrong end? Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, but we you, people. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I can do that when I'm sober. I, mean, I wasn't making a story. No. <laughs> but you know what? If when it's, it's dark, when, if smoke, right? yeah, it is. But if smokers light more than one, yeah, yeah. You have it's not so much the other end because that can just happen sometimes. Right. But lighting more than one, like having one burning and lighting another one and then another one, that's a good one. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> right. Okay. So. When you cut somebody off, you decided to get to that point, what do you do? What's the best way to go about that? Maybe you should have a coffee. Yeah, or a glass of water. Sure. <laughs> you know, okay. Offer them a coffee. Offer them a, a juice or a water, definitely. Oh. Right? First of all, do you have any kind of designated driver program in your bar? Yeah. If you don't, start thinking about another place to work because of some serious liability. And we've established that you are now in the line as well as your bar. Right? And there's still bars out there who will not buy a designated driver a Coke or a coffee or a juice, and how much does that cost? Pennies. 
pennies. Come on, get out there. Buy a get a designated driver program. Way less than a lawsuit. Sure. It's way less than a lawsuit. Exactly. Right. And it makes them feel comfortable. Right. Dave. If I'm going to cut somebody off, I get really close. Uh, get them real close to me so Excellent. that I, like I've been cut off before because I do that sort of thing <laughs> every <laughs> once in a while. Okay. But, but I like to get it so it's not so because it's it's not embarrassing. embarrassing. It is. So if you get it right where they're you're focused in, it's just you two and you're not bringing anyone else in the conversation. It's right. not so because if somebody cuts me off, sometimes the feathers get fluffed up and it's like you know you're, exactly. you become even you could create well, even. You're drunk. Yeah, sure. you create a worse problem for, you know, like the exactly. guy you want to fight now. You become or, defensive or the yeah, person becomes you know. defensive. What's the, the best thing that you just said right away, though, when you do that? What did you do first of all? Discreet. 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 Yeah. Come here. It's private, right? Same thing if somebody's credit card is declined, right? Oh. It's a private thing. It's between you and me, you know? We'll keep it together. Fine. All of a sudden, I'm not going to embarrass you in front of your peers, in front of your friends, because if I do that, then you feel like you have to you know, get upset and, and defend yourself. Well, no, I'm not going to do that. First of all, I would always get their name. You know, I really want to have that personal touch. You know, if I'm having a problem with anybody, I'll bring them in. And I go, you know, what, what's your name? I'm Scott. You know, I'll ask them and then I'll offer right away. I won't just wait. You know, what's your name? Why? Right? I found that doesn't work so well. So I said, hey, what's your name? I'm Scott. You know, I'm waiting. And, you know, mom always told you be polite to people. So that kicks in somewhere, even with drunk people. You know, well, okay. Shakes my hand. Great. Hey, it's really nice to meet you. I'm really glad you come to tonight. Well, you know what? I think maybe it's time to have a Coke or a coffee. You know, you're not. Are you driving tonight? Well, you know, driving bad. Driving bad, right? Can I get you a coffee or a Coke? Because I think it's I think it's time to stop drinking. Sometimes, if you know them, if you're they're your regulars, just keep serving them their rum and Coke, but just give them Coke and don't even tell them. Yeah, and don't obviously don't charge them. Right? No, just, just say this one's on me, and they don't even know. They're, <laughs> oh, that's what's really Dale. strong. <laughs> Sorry, what was that? I didn't catch that. Dale. Am I being the bad guy here? Because if I think somebody's had too much to drink, they're going home right then and there. See, I've always been under the impression that if they look fairly inebriated so that they're leaning or fondling with their money or slurring or wop bobbling, there's yeah. still three, four, five, or six ounces or drinks in their body that hasn't kicked in yet. Yeah. So yeah, you haven't point. seen them. Yeah as drunk as they're going to be. Right. <laughs> Especially if you're in a crowded environment and there's, what's, you know, it's a nightclub and there's a few swelled up juice monkeys in there right. that like to fight, you know, and they're sure. looking for candidates. Or yeah. there's some nicely dressed couples that this guy or girl yeah, might gonna bump offend. into somebody and all of a sudden boyfriend goes, right. gets, you know, uh, yeah. aggro in front of his girl. That's a really good point. And that's why a lot of places uh, will say once they're inebriated, Past the point, then they have to leave the establishment. That's, that's our fault. Okay, now there's one point I want to make. A lot of the laws that are out there, you know, are, are over here. And what's being enforced is over here, right? It's really lax of what's being enforced. And some of these laws in, in some of these places are really, wow, they put a lot of onus, so they put a lot of responsibility on the bar and the bartender away from the person making the decision to drink. So I have mixed feelings about that. Uh, on, the, on the one hand, I think that, hey, they're making their choice. They're choosing to drink. They're choosing to get in the car and drive and do something stupid. You know, they should pay the consequences, right? However, I realize that we're drink they're drinking, and we know it's a fact what happens to the decision-making process. We know this, right? So we have to take that into account as well, right? So when, uh, uh, but basically my point is for this, this whole video is that cover your butt, you know, because it's the right thing to do to take care of the people, right? Because you have illegal responsibility, because you have a moral responsibility, right? And at any given time, someone's going to be made a scapegoat, right? The law is over here, and it's really strict in a lot of places, and they're getting tougher, right? And it's getting tougher, and someone's going to get screwed, right? Suing everybody, everybody's suing everybody. Exactly. And not blaming everybody, not taking any responsibility for, for their own actions. They're just putting it on everyone else. Yeah. Exactly. You gave me that drink. Yeah. You yeah. paid for it. Exactly. Yeah. On that, uh, on cutting someone off, I always you, you put your hand out when you said, you know, I'm Scott. What's your name? I always I always put my hand on someone's shoulder when Good. I'm getting close there because I always want like to know. I know when um, you talked about that second hand, that contact yeah. and stuff, and, and that's a huge thing. If you get in so, someone personally and you, you put right. your hand on their shoulder and you're like, you know what? I've been there. I've been just as just as as, uh, exactly. as far gone, and, and I totally understand. I just I can't serve you anymore. Yeah. I, I'd love to, but I just can't. Can you understand that? And they always go, yeah, man, I don't understand that. Okay, cool. Yeah, you know, back off Excellent. at that point. You follow it up with, can I call a cab for you? Yeah. yeah. Exactly. You know, it's all in the same 
motion, right. basically. When right. you do cut somebody off, though, like uh, making sure that everybody else in the bar knows, knows that you've cut them off, yeah. Yeah. and trusting your other employees, that your waitress, and that they're not going to reserve this yeah. person. And this That's right. Person. Now, on this on this subject, though, this is difficult. This is more easier said than done. Let's be realistic. Hey, that sounds great. Tell everybody in your establishment. You know what? You got a bar full of people, right, to take care of, but you can't get to all your people. If you want to do as much as possible, tell your bartender, tell your waitress, tell your doorman, you know, to spread the word. You know. Also, what I like to do is if they're in a group, I'll bring their their leader of the group over. I go here, and again, I will. What's your name? I'm Scott. You know, and I love that. You know, getting a hand on a touch, it's more personal, it's relaxing, you calm them down, right? You being really calm yourself. And I'll say, you know what, your buddy's, your buddy's had a little bit too much to drink, so um, we're going to have to cut him off. Now, we don't want, you know, you guys all to leave, you know, but, you know, I wonder if you could help me. Just, you know, keep an eye on him, make sure he's all right. You know, this is a more realistic way of dealing with this, because a lot of places say kick him out right away. Well, then what happens? They're mad and the bouncer throws them exactly, out right? they get in their car. Get, their, get peer pressure to work for you. Right? Get them on your side. Also keep in mind saying, you know, I realize that you guys are friends, but just so you know, I can't have them drinking. Right? So I, I, I can't have any of your friends feeding them drinks. Can, can you take care of that for me? Yeah. Excellent. Right? Discuss with them. Yeah. You can suggest to take them for a walk, take them to dance, get them up, move them around. I mean, people know too when their friends are out of control. And it, does, it helps you if the bartender's on your side. Yeah. I mean, I've been out with one friend of mine and it's like, they still keep getting, and I'm taking it away and they're giving it and yeah. I'm taking it away. And it's like, no, just look at what's going on. Yeah. I think it's all about awareness before. If you notice someone's starting to get drunk, right. cut down their drinks a bit. Suggest something that's less alcohol. You know, you can slow people down too. Cut down from doubles to Yeah, like if, you're, if right. you've been selling doubles and you notice this one girl after two doubles is going like this, well, don't give her a shooter. Totally. You know, you're just asking for trouble later for yourself. Totally. Mark, do you have a comment? I just, back to the throwing people out, I, I kind of, I, th I think I kind of agree with it. Because I don't think that, that person's that inebriated, I don't think they can do very much good in that club. No. In that situation, even if they are with their friends. Like, I, only, I, don't, I don't think anything When it gets to that point, up. definitely. When there's, I mean, you don't want, well, it depends on what kind of level of club you're at, right? If you want to have a classy, respectful club, right, it's quality. Then if someone is at that point, that's not the spectacle that I want to see. That I want my customers to definitely. Now, if they're just you realize that they're there, and like you know, but they're not causing any problem. Basically, what what we think of is that, you know you can do anything you want in the Roxy. Have as much fun as you want, as long as you don't infringe on someone else's fun. Well, I think if you're a danger to yourself or a danger to other people, exactly. I mean, it'd be really hard to go in the Roxy and say, okay, you stop bouncing and you stop. It's not that kind of bar. So no. people are going to get drunk. They drink fast. It's like a college crowd will drink fast. But I think just put more things in place where you do have cabs to go and people exactly. are paying attention. Let's get into that. What are some ways that we can take care? Because it's going to happen, right? A lot of places we're continually serving or over-serving. That's part of the business. I mean, let's be re realistic, right? What are some ways that we can take care of this? Because we know what's going to happen. How can we get them home safely? Andrew. Encourage people to take a taxi to your staff. Absolutely, right? You know, you can t tell them, hey, my, you know, when you're having a customer that night, when you come down next week, make sure you drive, because you know you're going to be drinking. Come on, take a cab. Driving bad, if you, right? If you do get them to take a cab, make sure you offer it twice. Yeah. yeah. It helps you in your legal liability. I assume that would stand very uh, elsewhere as well. Right. But here, if you offer someone a cab and they refuse it, you go back with, you, with another person saying, I really think you should take a cab. Yes. I would even pay for that cab. They say, no, you're not out of the water. But you're a lot closer out of the water than you just were. Right. So. I was just in Lake, in Lake Tahoe at a place called uh, Harvey's Casino, uh, training a lot of their bartenders there. And they've got an exceptional staff and the management. I mean, they're really behind them. And they've got a great designated driver program. And they will pay for your cab. Absolutely. Anybody who's been drinking and they need to ask to leave the establishment, they will walk you out, they will get you a cab, put you, and they will pay the cab fare. <coughs> Classy. Right? And boy, how much money is that going to save them in liability down the road? Huge, huge, huge. Now, one point to make. A lot of laws, especially Western laws, are based on the reasonable man theory. Right? I'm not so sure about you know, the Eastern countries, but basically what would a reasonable man or woman do in this situation or that situation? Not a superhuman person, not somebody, I'm not saying you have to go you know, above and above and beyond the call of duty, but what would a reasonable average person do in that situation? Now, what I want to be able to do if I have to go to court in any country, say, well, sir, Ma'am, I, I, I did this. I have a designated driver program. Um, I've, you know, I've got, got this video of discussing the, you know, you know, about the, you know, the, the pros and the cons of, 
of how to deal with these drinking and driving. I have a lot of places have um, like a serving it right program or a, uh, a special service about of alcohol program. A lot of places have those in the world. Um, we have cabs lined up outside of our club all night long. You can't not walk out there without getting hit by a cab. Um, we have uh, the DJ at the end of the night announce at the very end, hey, thank you all for coming. Please don't drink and drive. If you need some help, get us a, let us get you a cab. They're right outside. I, I have uh, you know, signs in the bathroom that says, please don't drink and drive. Uh, on our videos, on our, on our extreme videos, at the end of it, it says, you know, please don't drink and drive. We don't want you to. Uh, or your mom wouldn't want you to, and neither do we. You know, kind of funny, because we think that's important. Um, did you, again, have a designated driver program? Did you cut them off? Did you uh, offer to do anything? Like, what did you do other than just serve them and say, well, nah, I got, I'm busy. I'm going to go into the next person. Right? Some places have a really good idea having a direct line, a direct phone line to a cab company in their bar. Right? Now, a lot of places are right downtown. There's lots of cabs around, but in a faraway place. How, you know, how long do you think it would take the cab company to put a direct line into a club? Yeah. Like, you, excuse me? How about this afternoon? You know what? Absolutely. But even like, you know, the ad for the people that drive your, a lot of people don't take a cab and they drive home because they don't want their car downtown because you get towed. Exactly. So, I mean, a bar, if you had enough bars together and you said, you know, we want to make a deal. I don't know if there is a deal with the Roxy and this company that drives your car home or the people that tow it home. Make some sort of deal of your bar. Like, you know, I'm sure if you say, look, this is how many people, because that's the thing. People don't want to get towed for 70 sure. bucks. Well, what are, what are the other reasons why people do, do who people drink and drive? They don't want to get towed. They don't want to get towed. They don't want their car to what? Vandalized. Vandalized. Be stolen. Yeah. <laughs> and vandalized. Too drunk to walk. Sorry? They're too drunk to walk. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, okay. I'm yeah. serious. Just no. like, not a joke. No. But it isn't. Or they have to go to work the next morning. They don't have time to pick up their car. Exactly. You know? Met a girl, right. met a they guy. met a girl, they want to take them home, they exactly. promise they're ready to drive people home. Right. So be aware of these reasons, right, and anticipate some of these problems and how you can deal with them. But, you know, offer some options is the main thing. You know, cover your butt. And, I mean, it's, it's not only legal, I believe, but because I really believe that we need to take care of these people. We're making money off them. We're profiting. All right, so we should take care of them. Russ? I see a lot of the solution in, in the waitresses, in the bartenders, like early signs, yeah. like everybody can recognize, you know, someone's getting a little glow on, teeth are getting a little numb or sure. something like that. You can maybe, I like to suggest dancing. You know, I just try to get as many people out dancing as possible. It promotes everything, happiness, whatever like that. Yeah. And I've been in a really drunk situation where I thought, you know, oh my goodness, I'm starting to spin and stuff like that. And then a girl drags me up, starts dancing, and I'm back on my feet again. You know what I mean? Like that's just a personal thing that I would do. but. Um, to get them into cabs and everything is really difficult when they're really that impaired. So I would say, if you can, it's different in a lot of places, but try to monitor uh, how fast they're drinking. And sure, pay attention to the, like the level of consumption. There's all Def different types of ways you can give them a breather round, maybe. Cranberry juice, water. You're dancing while you're working? Yeah, yeah you make your dance. That's a great idea, and some Absolutely. places do. They have yeah. that machine. And now, you know keep what? They're like a fun game. Yeah, they're You know, when you're not driving, because you can blow it and see how far over. But I mean, right. a lot of people drive, and they, they have no idea. Like, I mean, I'm sure that I'd be point zero eight without knowing I was point zero eight. Yeah. I don't drink and drive at all. Cause okay, let's quantify this for a second. Generally, how much, you know, how many drinks does it take for someone to be inebriated? I think more than one an hour, isn't it? Okay, there's a couple things. Number one, if you have any alcohol in your system, you will be impaired. 24 hours. It is, it is changing. Well, that's in this particular place, but it's different everywhere. My point is, you have any alcohol in your body, and your judgment and your reflexes are impaired to a little bit of degree. And obviously, the more you have, the more it's going to be impaired. Now, every number is different like every, in every country, like you know, 0.08, or uh, that's a pretty standard, I think, in North America. But 0.04, really? There, there's, there's places that uh, have a zero tolerance. You have anything in your system, you're going to get a 24-hour suspension. Right? Things are changing all the time. Somebody told me in India or in the Middle Eastern country, if you're caught drinking and driving, they can shoot you on yeah. the side of the road. Malaysia? Really? Yeah, yeah. Singapore. yeah. Somewhere, somewhere Singapore, somewhere that. Okay. They will shoot you if they find you impaired. No questions asked, no court, no nothing. Well, you blew over. <coughs> Execution wow. by firing. Is that now, your wife? This, this sounds pretty, pretty wild, actually. Guys, it sounds pretty wild, but um, there's something we have in our manuals that uh, um, maybe I'll post on our website so people can, can take a look at it. 
Um, but there's ways that the world is dealing with drunk drivers. And I got this out of a, an insurance place, car insurance place, a couple of years ago, and it was, it was absolutely true. I think Bulgaria, second, result, <coughs> second conviction results in execution. Um, there are places that, you know, print your... Salvador was uh, uh, yeah, Salvador was immediate. Uh, Czechoslovakia at the time, I think, was a uh, reformatory measure, a loss of, uh, I think they put you in a different job, a lower responsible yeah, job. Not only, not only did you, uh, you went to jail, when you got out of jail, they... <laughs> whoa, whoa, one at a time, one at a time, Ian. When you got out of jail, they got, a, they got a chance to, they just told you what you'd be doing. So if you were a doctor, right, if you had gone to jail for a year, you came out, they said, oh, you're no longer a doctor, you're now a janitor. So welcome to your new life. Right. And they would compensate a percentage of your salary. Sure. Well, I will say, too, with, it doesn't matter because, let me tell you, you run over a kid on a bike. I don't care if you've had half a drink. When that parent comes into court to put you down the river for as long as they can, you better believe that that half a drink is going to matter, no matter what, because it, you kill someone's kid or someone's grandma or someone's mom, you, you're going to get dangerous driving. They'll yeah. find a way to do it, and it's not going to help that you had anything to drink at all. Exactly. You no, know, that's just going to be one more little. I mean, right. someone, I have a child. If someone ran him over, let me tell you. With, if I'd go back at the bar, the bartender that let that person leave drunk. Yeah. It's a difficult situation. Be aware of it. You know, we have some, and we can do something about it. We can do better. We can do better. I think awareness changes, though, all the time. It used yeah. to be way worse. I mean, I used to drink yeah. and drive when I was a kid. I mean, if we drive sure. to the beach, I'd follow the car. You know, but awareness is growing it. because we're talking about it, and people are yeah. standing up and saying, I believe this is important. Yeah. You know, if you make it cool, Hey, it's cool to believe this is important. It's not a joke. People are dying. All right. Any other questions, comments, observations? One? Yeah, sure. Um, just getting back to the, I, I know I wanted to continue on what I was saying before about the early signs because I think it's very important. Another couple of different ways would be like if you're bringing uh, like maybe a 300-pound man five shots as per maybe a 105-pound man right. five shots. I mean, you would think the 300-pound guy could handle it and uh, the skinny guy couldn't. I mean, of course, there's always exceptions to every rule, but waiters, waitresses, bartenders can really actually even predict if somebody's going to be uncontrollable in 15, 20, well, half an hour now. Yeah, yes, yes and no. Uh, yeah, we get to know people, but everybody's different. Boy, a seasoned drunk. You know, can have a lot and all of a sudden just look well, fine. Just both of shooters from the other on that exact topic, both in, I think you and I were extremely surprised on the weekend, the two people from the States that came up, a brother and sister, and we, uh, really nice people, it was, uh, they couldn't believe that they were getting bought a drink. They were wonderful people and we had a shooter. I think we had, in an hour and a half or so, we might have had three shooters. Yeah. And the guy, the guy was loaded. Yeah. He lit, put his head down and he goes, yeah. I don't want and he walked out the door. And she was sitting there going, I, what, what just happened? And we're like, you're kidding. He's done. The sun's not even down. <laughs> what is going on? But we don't know what he had before he came into the bar. Yeah. Exactly. Right? And nobody ever knows. Pay attention. Do the best you can to, you know, to anticipate. Well, this, you know, is, this is another thing I learned as well, actually, from this trip we went on. Yeah. Um, heights and altitudes yeah. matter. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I can have a few beers and be all right, but uh, I had like four beers and I couldn't hardly walk back to the hotel room. Sure. Yeah. What was it on the way up to uh, to Lake Tahoe? The the bus driver said that just keep in mind that the altitude level here is 6,500 feet, and that affects you differently when you drink alcohol. <laughs> Basically, one drink at 6,500 feet affects you like three drinks do at sea level. All right. So I mean, he's not a scientist. I don't know, but boy, I had one beer. And whew, I was like, okay. So basically, yeah. I had four beers times three. I had 12 beers in two hours. Yeah. I was just goon. And you know what? <laughs> when you come down from the altitude, people on airplanes do it all the time. Because they huck back their normal amount of drinks. Right. Mm -hmm. And they get just done when the plane lands. They can't really stand up. Really? The well, plane. well, they can't stand up. Because they the drink. Plane. I know, but you get drunk really fast. Good value yeah. for your money on the plane. <laughs> yeah. Just don't have somebody waking you up in the morning. So the main thing for this whole, whole video, you know, just be aware of it. It's a problem. We have something to do with it, and we can do something about it. You know, we can minimize it. We can talk about it. We can make sure that people are not driving home. Uh, you know, we can care. You know, we can make a difference. We can do better. Yeah. You know? Thanks, Ralph, for coming. Appreciate it. Uh, what's the what's the most difficult situation you've had to deal with uh, while working in the industry? Besides getting beaten up by the girls, 
Um, I think the most difficult situation we have in this industry is the fact that we get angry at people we get drunk. It's not someone, like someone comes up and they're irate about a subject. Well, granted they've had a, maybe a few too many cocktails or something's gone wrong, so everything's exploded. But the most difficult situation is just keeping your cool while you go, I'm trying to explain this to you. I know you're having a trouble understanding, but I'm trying to help you. You're not helping me at all. Well, that's the worst thing you can possibly get involved in is someone that you've gotten drunk and is angry at you because there's just not any chance that you'll work it out. You, there is in the, in the long run, but it takes a lot of tender patience and not losing your cool. Yeah, perseverance and knowing that uh, it, it's something that you're semi-responsible for yeah. and there's always a way to, to fix it. Yeah. Thank God I've never really lost anybody close to me, uh, knock on wood, but uh, I did have a friend of mine who had a drinking and driving charge and one night did uh, drink and drive, uh, unfortunately. He didn't get into an accident, thank God, um, but my girlfriend at the time was uh, infuriated with him, infuriated with him, and uh, she was working in a group home at the time, uh, working with a lot of disabled kids and, and handicapped, some people, and a couple of them had been uh, in an accident uh, with a drinking dr driver or uh, had been hit by one and uh, she took him down the next day to those group homes to, to meet these people and it really struck a chord with him and uh, needless to say I mean it, he didn't endanger any more lives thereafter after seeing some, what the repercussions of, uh, of drinking and driving really can mean. Drinking and driving to me is a very personal and serious topic. Uh, one time we were going I was driving from Lake Louise to Banff with a group of friends and had to go to the washroom really, really, really bad. And uh, so we pulled over in a safe spot. And as soon as I shut the door to go towards the ditch and have a, a pee, the, a drunk driver smacked into the car. I just got out of at 100 miles per hour. And they both went shattering down the highway. So I had to do first aid. And it was very shocking for me just to watch it all. you know. And it really put in the importance of uh, the seriousness, actually, of not, don't drink and drive, don't drink and drive. I do not approve of drinking and driving and I would try to restrain anybody I can using all methods possible. I don't know, I, I figure that if you can go to a bar and spend $100 or even $40, you can afford to take a cab home. And if you can't, you shouldn't be at the bar. I mean, it's just responsibility. I, I think your life changes and you don't want to wipe someone off, off the earth because you're an idiot, essentially. And if you don't have a good enough friend out of all your so-called friends to stop you from drinking and driving, driving, driving. <laughs> See, I'm not driving. I, I think you need new friends, yeah. essentially, because no one really cares about you then. And you don't care about yourself. A very good friend of mine, James Starring, uh, an amazing bartender, um, had a little dinner party one night. Uh, it was for the bartending staff at the nightclub we were working at the time. There were about 12, 14 people showed up. Four of us were driving vehicles. We thought it was okay. We'd go in, have dinner with James, and we're going to a cocktail and later. We'll have a couple of drinks. That'll be fine. Ironically enough, as we're having dinner, we hear this very large crash. Some lady goes through a set of stoplights, sideswipes all four vehicles that were on the side of the road in front of James's home. Apparently, she had only had two or three drinks and was on her way home. We learned a very valuable lesson, you know. She will never, she probably won't see her driver's license for two or three years, but the, you know, just how simple it is to be over the limit and to be illegal and to cause confrontation on the road. It's just off. Do you recommend uh, any sources of information, books, videos, websites, uh, anything that uh, represents... I, I do recommend, and I know this is a bit of a plug, I do recommend Scott's site um, he, because he has a lot of links to a lot of options. He hasn't just taken some and gone, well, you're the only ones I'll support. He, he has things that he values and he says they're great, but every one of them has a reason that they're there, so there's lots of options for a lot of people. But the biggest resource that I'll ever, that I'll ever use myself is the people that were there before me. The people that are already working there, the senior, what I call old school, and I don't mean old people, I mean the people that know what that place, that venue is specifically good for what kind of shooters are the most popular what kind of customers are the are the most frequenting that's where i learn more than anything all my life it's always been from the people that have been there before me
and the ones who have excelled and absolutely that thereby having the staying power. And you don't talk to anyone else. You say hi, you chat, but you don't value the position or the opinions of people that don't excel themselves. I was taking a taxi home and I passed a really bad accident like a block and a half away from work and I knew for sure there were some fatalities there. And when I got home, I actually called the hospital. The hospital was two blocks away to see who the, the people were. And um, it just made me really uh, sit down and think of my responsibility of over serving a customer. I kind of felt really bad that I probably did know that person. Maybe I even served him. I didn't think about the uh, legal legalities of, of that, but. I just felt really bad that I bet you that guy just came from our bar. Uh, we did a, um, a thing in the interview, uh, in the um, videos earlier about how many actual drunk drivers are out on the road at any given time. Like, I think it was one or five. I don't know the statistics, but it was a lot on Friday or Saturday night, basically. Too many. One in ten, okay. Too many. Um, I came into this intersection and uh, in Windsor, four car accident, and they were all drunk. Like, that just goes to show you, in one accident, there was actually four people that were intoxicated. Like, that's, that's, that's pretty sad, really, to tell you the truth. It's... Certainly, uh, some of the more difficult situations, I had a guy throw a full snifter of brandy at my head at a New Year's party, and uh, because I, I refused to overserve him, oh, that was a pretty... maybe he was a friend of a friend. No, 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 no. <laughs> he might have been, but I don't know. Uh, yeah, I refused to serve him, and, and he uh, he hit me in the head with a with a brandy snifter. Usually, I'm pretty good with drunks because I, I don't mind. I, I it, it's not that I think that being drunk is a good thing, but here's the story. I was on an airplane, and if you've ever had your flight attendant bend over and close the windows, well, I was doing this, and there was this group of guys from Newfoundland, and this guy smacked my butt while I was doing it. Well. I could have flipped out, and I mean, it's the year 2000, I could have sued him. I mean, I could have had him arrested. Anyway, I just turned to him and I laughed, and I said, you're a very, very bad man. And I said, and I can't believe that you've done this. So you're going to take a nap, and there's no more booze for you for a while, okay? And when you wake up, you're going to say sorry. And he's, oh, yeah, okay. You know, he takes his nap. See, I think that there's so many ways to resolve difficult situations. I mean, it's a grain of salt. I'm not going to die because someone slapped my ass. You know, you, you, but people take everything so seriously nowadays. I don't want this guy in jail. I mean, his poor little wife's picking him up at the airport in Torbay. I mean, is it worth it? You have to always think, is it worth it? I mean, of course, if someone assaults you on a street or, or physically threatens you, that's different. But you got to give some play to things. That's what I mean about taking yourself, like, just laugh, you know? Yeah, exactly. You've got to blow some things off. Yeah. Yeah, but, but it was funny because when, it, when I asked him why, he said, well, it just was there. <laughs> and I believe him. Um, no, I first heard of Bar Smart when I was in Penticton, and uh, I was working for Earl's. Yeah, I was working for Earl's. Um, they had, uh, somebody had put together a package, and someone had mentioned Scott's bar tending what he had been doing at the Roxy, um, and his course that he, that he had had. And... Uh, that was really the first time I'd ever heard of it. I didn't know anything about it. I th thought it was just a bartending school. And, uh, you know, I've never been a super fan of just the schools. Now, where is, isn't it it's surprising how, what a distinction there is between a bartending school and something like this? Bar Absolutely. Smart. It's night and day. Although I'm sure, and, and I've never been through Scott's course entirely, um, I've heard him, seen the videos, and I've talked to him, and I've, and I've given him my insights and things. I've never seen uh, a course that teaches you to give customer service. I've teach, seen courses that teach you to how to pour a drink, and ice equals profitability, and straw here, and this there, and this is the way we hold the bottle. Can you make me a mint julep? Exactly. <laughs> I, I've never seen a course that teaches anyone like this course to be customer service oriented. Forget about what you're making, and serve them the way they want to be served. The biggest of all things. So. Exactly. Some customers will insist to you that they want their gin and tonic with Rum, and, rum coke. and coke, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I swear that comes in a bottle. Yeah. Rum and coke has always been in a bottle where I'm from. Take care of them. Yeah, but it's always Scotty has always done. Um, I, again, practices what he preaches, and he preaches service above all else. Period. What is the most rewarding experience you've had while you were working? Um, 
mm. probably just knowing, you know, calling somebody a cab home, knowing that, you know, they, they're not driving. They'll get home safe, you know. So that's pretty rewarding, you know, you did something, you helped out. That pretty much wraps it up. I hope you enjoyed the video as much as we enjoyed making it. Be sure to check out our website. We've got lots of new stuff going up all the time. And if you like what we do, tell your friends about us. We'd really appreciate it. Also, make sure you check out the ads at the end of the video. These are some great companies and they can really help you if you give them a chance. So call them and find out for yourself. I'd like to leave you with three of my favorite quotes and a few thoughts. Abraham Lincoln said, I don't think much about a man who doesn't know more tomorrow than he did today. Michael Jordan said, I can accept failure. Everybody fails sometimes, but I can't accept not trying. And Wayne Gretzky said, I miss 100% of the shots that I don't take. So bottom line, care enough about what you do to think about how to do it better. And be proactive. Go out there and make something happen in your life. But above all, enjoy your life, because you never know how long you've got. Who wants to play golf? Smart now brings you a sensational six-week program. You'll learn everything you need to know about serving drinks with style. <laughs> with step-by-step -step and slow motion instruction, you'll learn easily, quickly and properly, so you won't spool the profits or break everything in sight. This is a business, and great bartenders do more than just take orders. So create excitement and increase your sales revenue with the Extreme Bartending Video Training Series. Our three videos with over 240 moves in all is a must for bartenders everywhere. No matter what level of bartender you are now, if you follow our program, you'll increase your odds for success because you'll make an impact on every customer you ever serve. Think about it. If you don't entertain your customers, someone else will. Because in this highly competitive industry, you can't just expect high sales and big tips. You've got to earn them. So you can have a lot of fun with it. You can make more money for your bar, make more money for yourself. And if you do it properly, it's a win-win-win situation for everybody. gives a little spark to people's lives. I think the world's starving for entertainment. Cocktail the movie. That was great. It was a really good beginning. But, uh, that was 1988. Hopefully by now we've taken it further. Look out! My man.